Good morning, everybody. It's another day, it's another week. Today is Monday when I'm filming this. I've gotta go grab a trailer and put another empty sea can on it, chain it down, and take it up to Thompson, Manitoba, which is about eight hours north into the province from where I am. I live on the south end of the province. I'm a southerner, I live like the weather stripping of America. I live just, just right over the border from Minnesota. But I gotta go further north into, into the province. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Glad you're here. Let's go get our can. Let's get moving. Today's video. Today's special shout out goes to our friends at House Products. You can find a link to their website down below my video in the description. All the diesel treatment products you need. Best of the best. Go check them out. signs and arrows at shippers and receivers. So that you know where to go. And is there anybody else back here? Nice! I get loaded right away. says on the sign in front of me to call for assistance but if the forklift guy's right there already I'm thinking I could just wait here and he'll come say hi to me I and mean, he obviously knows I'm here but the sign says I should call we'll see what he does he's dropping that big can that he was pulling out of here if he doesn't come straight over here to talk to me then I'll call that number and maybe it's a different driver that loads me I don't know but I got my my Sunday vest on right now, even though it's Monday, but it's my birthday, so I figured I'd dress up for my birthday. 
Oh yeah, he's coming here right now. Right on. Really nice guy. He's gonna go grab it for me. 20 footer. That's what it is. Last time was a 40 footer. Uh, it was just a 20 footer this time. So uh, I'm watching him grab it there. Okay, so this one does have the, the slots for the forks to go into over there. That's awesome. That'll be much easier to unload it. Last time we had to drag it off the back because there was no fork holes. Hopefully that'll work. We'll make it work. Truck drivers, that's what we do. We problem solve in all weather conditions, in all climates, in all locations, wherever you are, you come up to a problem, you have to solve it. We don't just hold a steering wheel. Some do, some are just steering wheel holders. Those of us who actually want the title of truck driver also have to take on a whole lot more responsibility on top of that. And not just the steering wheel holding, that's the easy part that, that anyone can do. It's the rest of it. The, all the responsibility that comes with problem solving, tying down freight, making sure you don't lose it, managing your weights, managing the safety, remaining safety compliant on your truck. There's a whole host of other things. And you know what? How about we go down below to the comment section, describe to me in the comment section what it means to be a truck driver to you. And don't say steering wheel holder because I already covered that one. Okay, we, we all can hold a steering wheel. To you, what does it take to be considered a truck driver and what does it take to gain your respect? Let me know down below. I need to use this ladder so I can get up there. when you're hooking up your chains, you want it to be like this. You want it to be like that so that the chain is resting in the hook. That way, while you're messing around with it down here, tightening it up, chaining on the bottom, that up there won't fall out of the hook because it is literally resting in it, you know? Like that. Gravity is helping you. So I've got the one chain tightened up already. And do the second one. So we've got these snugged up real tight. And you'll see that on these traps here, I've got the safeties on. Safeties on, you have to have those if you use this style. I prefer this style myself. A lot of people prefer the ratchet binders. I totally understand. They're a lot easier to use, but maybe I just like the element of danger a little bit. I don't know, these things could snap open and knock your teeth out if you're not careful. I don't know, I've just always used these and I just, I like to stick with what I know and also extremely expensive to replace and they're still working just fine. Just got to make sure you put safeties on here. I got lots of these in my shop. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll wrap this extra chain 
around that so that, uh, so that that's not flailing around just make it look a little neater going down the road I mean technically I guess I could leave it like that because it's not going to flow it into traffic but I mean look at this it could actually fling out past my trailer so I'll have to clean that up and we do the same thing on the other end so you go from the top here in an X so what these chains are doing is it's holding the load down right and then I wrap it around here because the kick up here is stopping it from sliding forward but if this kick wasn't here you see I put the chain around a little bit further back so that actually sort of wraps it and prevents it from sliding forward even if this kick wasn't here so it's holding it down and holding it back the chains in the in the rear will do exactly the opposite and then the can is completely secured can't move side to side because these are holding it from moving side to side as well can't move up because it's holding it down and it can't move forward or back and you got all directions covered then you can officially give it the official pat and say that ain't going nowhere you reserve that phrase though for when you're sure <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, okay. I'll go do the back and then we'll be on the road. All right, we're done. I threw two straps over it too. Just in case, you know. Honestly, I don't need them. I don't need the straps on the chains are plenty enough. But just in case, you know me. Just in case. It gives me an extra sense of security. You always get so dirty when you deal with chains. Rusty. I, I closed my headache rack, right? I have to double check. I have to be triple sure before I leave. Yes, it's all closed and locked up. And my airlines are not touching my catwalk. Good, you can't have your airlines touching your catwalk. That's because when you're going down the road, they'll rub through. And you'll have a hole. You don't want a hole. Not in this case, anyway. I'm gonna go grab fuel at Flying J in Headingley. It's maybe like 20 minutes down the road. That'll be uh, perfect timing. Because then we can check on our chains and straps then and make sure everything is still secure and tight. I'm gonna grab fuel, grab a coffee, a little something to eat, and we'll make our way north. Probably 11 o'clock. I don't want to be there much later than that. 
Oh, and that was a short green light if I ever seen one. Really? Really? That's all you give us? Alright. Alright then. A lot of trucks turning here, and uh, that's all they gave us. Ah, ah. Gotta get through here quick. It's gonna be yellow right away. Okay, we got an open pump right over here. Oh. This parking lot is always just chaos, too. Let's hope that these pumps are working. That would be nice. Fueled up for 489 liters. Let's find out real quick how much I saved. So uh, let's see. Dollar 41.9 subtract dollar 27.9. So I saved 14 cents a liter by fueling up here. Times it by 489.01 liters. That's how much I bought. So just by coming here, I saved myself $68.46 today. It always pays to check where the cheapest juice is. And it wasn't really that far out of my way at all. Like, at all. It's just like a mile or two. Now, lights are on. We're officially loaded up, fueled up, and on the way to Thompson. Just gotta sneak out of these pumps here. I'm gonna give this guy a bit of space. He's got a day cab. He can back in there. He can back in there. Now, getting out of here is sometimes a little bit tricky sometimes because uh, it's a very small lot. But it's very busy, so people like to block this exit as they have right now. Oh, no, no, the guy's leaving. Okay, good. Oh, okay, good. I thought he had parked there. You're not supposed to park here at all. Like, even where this bobtail is, even though the bobtail is not really in the way, it's not a big deal. But sometimes these guys park their trucks right here, and this is the exit, right? And then you can't get out, and then everybody's stuck in the lot until they move. Even this guy could move up. You got like a mile between you and that truck in front of you, man. You see us squeaking by back here? He could move up, but... Oh, he's got an engine on the back here. Oh, and those straps are attached to the rub rails. Yeesh. All right, all right. Oh, now he's moving up. There you go, there you go. Look at that. I didn't say anything, I didn't say it. I, all I'm saying is I would do it a little different. But that's okay. So now he's trying to get into the lot or like what's going on here? We have to wait for the traffic lights. That's what this guy's waiting for. It's just chaos every time. I hate coming to this place. This is why I specifically don't come here. It's just chaos all the time. But when you got cheap juice, like 14 cents cheaper per liter, saving me almost 70 bucks, yeah, I'll come here. Fine, I'll deal with this mess, right? Right, money talks, it talks very loudly. All right, bud. Come on, give her. Give her, give her, give her, give her, give her, give her, give her. There we go. There right, you got this. All right, all right. We're not getting paid by the hour, but okay. Sweet. My turn. Wonderful. Wonderful. Longest road for six kilometers. Get out of there. I have a feeling I'm gonna to want to be in front of this guy. He seems a little unsure of himself, and that's okay. Maybe he's new. It's okay. But I'd rather be in front of a guy who's unsure of himself than behind him. Sneak right in here in front of that guy. There you go. We're gonna go right to the perimeter. Oh, hush, hush, hush. We're gonna go right to the perimeter, uh, turn west, and go to Highway 6. And Highway 6 is the road. That is the road that takes us up into northern Manitoba. Remember, there's only one. And once you get past Grand Rapids, you better make sure you're buckled in, like double 
five port, almost need a five point harness just to make sure you don't go flying out the window so bumpy. Keep your windows closed, keep your seatbelt on. Those bumps will throw you right out. I'm exaggerating, it's, it's just, it's really rough. Oh, that's why you're unsure of yourself, bud. You got your phone in your hand. I see. I see. I too would be unsure of myself in that situation, driving through town. I see. I see. Hey, hey, no judgment. Once again, no judgment. Once again. There's a time and a place when you're driving through the city is not exactly the place, but hey, that's my opinion, right? What do I know? What do I know? He's from Calgary. Maybe they do it different in Calgary. Beautiful day out. By next weekend, it's supposed to be plus 16. Of course, that would be plus 16 Celsius. What is plus 16 Celsius in Fahrenheit? According to QMAP, answer, 16 degrees Celsius is equal to 60.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's the temperature next weekend, not right now. Right now, the temperature is six degrees Celsius. What is six degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? Six degrees Celsius is equal to 42.8 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a nice day. What's with all the garbage in the in the ditch here? Look at that. What did a garbage truck lose his entire load down here? That's terrible. That's disgusting. Why is there so much garbage in that ditch? In two kilometers, wow. take the entrance to the ride on Highway 101 West. It's great all along here. Oh, that looks terrible. That's unacceptable. We need to... I almost feel like writing a letter into the city. Like, what's up with this day? I've never seen it that bad. Someone's got to do something about that.
made it. It is 11, 11 p.m. I'm gonna pull into the Petra Pass here again, just like last time. Hopefully find a spot to park, shut her down. I wanna go straight to bed, I'm tired. Felt a lot longer this time for some reason. You know, some days like they're the same amount of time, but sometimes it just feels so much longer than other times. Strange, right? I'm getting here a little late, so hopefully, hopefully I'll have somewhere to park here. same spot I was in last time. Off to the side, snowbank on that side, nobody really on this side. Let's go check our load and then we'll shut her down. way so the container is still back here that's good news it's good news we didn't lose it. <laughs> it seems so weird that it's so short though just a little 20 footer my tail lights are still visible that's good That's where I'm gonna sleep tonight. That way it gives myself distance from that truck who's idling there. And all the other trucks and no one is able to drag their trailer over my truck over here. Whereas if I park on the side here on the corner, anybody coming around the side there or coming around back here, if they're not paying attention, could potentially drag their trailer over my truck and I prefer not to lose my hood. I'm kind of attached to it. I like it. That's it for today though. We made it safely. Another day behind us. Tomorrow's another day. We'll get this sea can off the trailer. Head back empty as far as I know. And uh, see what's from there. Maybe we'll head to Kenora. Maybe we'll head down to the US. Maybe we'll head to Winnipeg. Maybe we'll just go home. Who's to say? Tune in tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Best thing you can do for the channel is to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. And subscribe. Those are the three things. The trifecta of what you can do to support me for free. If you want to go one step further, you can join and become a member. Click the join now button below my video there. Premium members always get early access to my videos. You can read more about that if you click it down below. If not, just remember the trifecta. Subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment. Those things greatly help me with the algorithm and I really do appreciate that. More people get to see my videos that way. See you tomorrow. Take care and drive safe.